Hello, welcome to Walk in the Park. My name is Tony Ingram, and uh, this is our episode 119, recorded on October 28th, 2015. If you'd like to see all of our episodes of Walk in the Park, go to my video blog, walkinthepark.tv, walkinthepark.tv. Weekly show on Pegasus, uh, public access television in Ithaca, New York. And uh, so we're going to go, this week we're going to go to a place called Salt Point. Now, a lot of people don't know where Salt Point is, but a lot of people do know where Myers Point is on Cayuga Lake. So let's, uh, let's get located at Salt Point. Here's a picture, <coughs> excuse me, of the southern end of Cayuga Lake with Ithaca, Trumansburg up to the left, and Lansing at the very top. It may not come out on your screen. But just to the right of uh, center, above, upper right center, is Myers Point, and um, you can see a valley going up to the top, a green area. That's a valley. That is the the uh, Salmon Creek, which is a tributary of Cayuga Lake, and it has created Myers Point and Salt Point. And Salt Point is one half of the point created by Salmon Creek. Let's look at it from. This is actually over Taganic Point. That's Taganic Falls State Park in the lower foreground there. And right across the lake a couple of miles is uh, Myers, and Salt, uh, Myers and Salt Point, the mouth of Salmon Creek. Again, from up in the air over the west shore of Cuga Lake, looking straight across to Myers and Salt Point. And you see in the, in the point of land there, you can, well, first of all, you can see a, a valley coming down from the upper left. That's Salmon Creek again that's made... Uh, the peninsula in the lake by erosion over time and deposition of eroded hillside materials into the lake over thousands of years has built the point. And the creek comes out on the left-hand side of the point there. You can see sort of a little inlet there. Well, that is the mouth of Salmon Creek. So um, to the left of the mouth of Salmon Creek is Salt Point. It's a very small point. And to the right of it is Myers Point. So here's a view from the south along the east shore. So Myers Point is right in front of us there, right in the center. And you can't quite see the Mount, see uh, Salmon Creek, but the upper part of this is Salt Point. Here's another view from over the lake. Now you can see uh, Salmon Creek Valley coming down, that wooded area. Takes a sharp bend and comes out into the point and to the left-hand side of the mouth of the creek, which is on the left-hand side of the point there. That's called Salt Point. On the right is Myers Park. And there's a boat basin and marina and so forth there, camping, uh, uh, picnic area, swimming, that sort of, that kind of thing. Um, okay, let's get another view. We'll drop down almost on top of it here. These, these photos, by the way, were taken by Bill Hecht. He, um, he's a photographer in the area, shares his, all his work. Now you can see the mouth of Salmon Creek coming out of the hill there through the point. And the lower part of that, the left of Salmon Creek is, again, Salt Point. To the right is Myers Point. And let's see if we can get any closer. That's Salt Point right there in the center now with uh, Salmon Creek on the cutting through just above it and then to the right again, part of Myers Point. So, um, so why do they call it Salt Point? Well, that's because there once was a salt industry there. This is an old photo. I think this was taken in 1959. If I'm not mistaken, yeah, this is an Ithaca Journal photo, actually, from 1959. And in the, uh, the wooded area, that's Myers Point before the park was created, although there's a marina there you can see, or at least, at least uh, docking for boats. And then above it is an open area, and the, just above center, slightly to the left, is an industrial area. And that is the International Salt Company. And the International Salt Company, here's another view of it, closer up. Uh, salt Point was named because of the International Salt Company, initially known as Cayuga Salt Company, produced table and other salt products on this site from 1891 through 1962. The company was the heart and soul of the small community. That's uh, from the Lansing uh, Historical Association. Well, let's see what do we got here. That's all. Uh, that's all been taken down in 1964. It was all taken down and. Over time, it's become a park. So, but let's go take a look at that history. Again, we're going to go now to the Lansing Historical Society. I think it was on um, Thursday, October 22nd, last Thursday, where Louise Bement, the um, 
uh, Lansing historian, town historian, gave a presentation on the history of the international salt plant that was there and its place in the community. So uh, we'll bring that right up here. just like up in Syracuse, you had your open pans. And that's where this vapor is coming off. Up in Syracuse, they ran out of the wood to burn underneath, and then they used the sunlight. But you know, they have all these clouds up there, so that didn't last very long. And they, got, they don't make salt in Syracuse anymore. But uh, we had the open pans, and then some clever person invented the big, what we call the enclosed pan. And of course, they don't look like pans. They're big thing like this, but they're called pans because they were just like these that did the same job as a factory. What was the fuel? Uh, coal. Coal. These were fueled by coal, yeah. Now, this is what the original pans looked like when the factory 1907, 1908, and then the plant burned. Now these were copyrighted, patented, and so nobody was supposed to know what they looked like. But once everything burned down around them, everybody came and took pictures of them, and there went the patent. <laughs> okay, and they were fueled by coal. That's another picture of the old hands. This is what the plant looked like after the fire, and they built a new one. Guess what? All brick. Can't burn down. This is the pan room. If you look on, no, I'll have a picture of it, I'm pretty sure. Anyway, um, that was very big. As this got more modern, shrunk. To start out with, the International Salt Plant took up the whole point and they had the place they made barrels out at this end of the point and here was the office and if you worked making barrels you had to bring your lunch because you couldn't get from one end of the point to the other in time to stand in line to get your lunch and get back to work in time. So that's how big it was. Was the uh, Yes. International Salt Headquarters, I think, was Clark Summit, Pennsylvania. Were yes. there several plants at that time, or was this, was this the first one? Oh, no, I don't think this was the first one. This, this was uh, uh, just a, a little private company, and then it was Hugo Lake Salt, so, I think, and then it became International. Well, what so is, the, okay. the, pa the pans uh -huh. were evaporating, which certainly implies there was water mixed with salt. Well, these were, we didn't go down in the, we didn't mine this salt. On um, this, this was brine wells. We oh, have pictures okay, of brine the wells. wells. Okay, mm -hmm. all right. Oh, can you see one? So they were not mining salt. Mining. No, they were, you know what drives me nuts? They call it mining salt. And, it, and when you have a salt mine here, and you have the international here, it's very confusing when they say this is mining. But here's a salt well right here. You think, Derek? Okay. So is salt a point? A little north of Myers Point. Is that that point where you just go walking out in the fields and stuff now? Yeah. Okay. And there actually used to be a factory there now. Great big factory. That's where that where you walk today. And what I find very interesting when I'm down there walking is all the trees, big trees. And that factory was there till 1964. Oh, wow. This is the southern tanks on the hill. I think there's only two here, but eventually there were three tiers of them. Now, once you got the brine out of the well, it was dirty. 
and you had to have a, a, a starter, they called it, and it was a piece of gypsum. Just like you have to have a piece of dirt to make a snowflake or a raindrop, you had to have something for the, salt, for the dirt to go around and drop out and go down to the bottom of the tank. So the first row of tanks would have dirty looking brine. The second row of tanks, they'd come down and they'd have a little bit cleaner. And by the time you got the third row of tanks and you had your clean, it was a beautiful blue color. And then that was piped into the evaporating pans and evaporated into table salt. Wow. There's another picture of the, paint, of the settling tanks. This is the middle school. This is Searing Hill. Mm -hmm. So, where are the tanks? The Searing Hill is back there. This, these houses, this is where the Abrams live. Okay. All right, got it. Okay. I'll tell you a story about Charlie Howell. Charlie Howell was in high school and he wanted to work and he thought he could work all night and go to school all day and he wouldn't, he'd be okay because he was going to sleep on the job. And the reason he thought he could sleep on the job was he was going to sit right next to one of those tanks and on the third row where it was going to, you know, the last row that where they were. And he put his foot over the edge of the tank. And he figured when the water got up to his ankle, it would wake him up. Oh, he slept very soundly. <laughs> <laughs> he washed out the railroad tracks. <laughs> they had to flag the train. And he, oh. he had a nice boss, and he didn't completely lose his job. But he didn't work that There's another good picture of the tanks. And you can see where Charlie could have sat here and hung his foot over. <laughs> now these are the men that worked there. This is down at Myers where we used to get our mail. It's that gray building just as you cross the railroad tracks. And you can tell that these people work in the international because they don't have lights on their helmets which the people who worked in the mine had to have in those days. This was when the storage shed collapsed. Now this picture is one of the big pictures down at Topps Grocery Store. They had this picture. And uh, Mr. Old Mr. Khalil, he lived to be 102, 103. Anyway, uh, he went, he, he, when he was just a teenager, he took water to the men who worked. That was his job. I think he got 25 cents a day. And he walked in the storage shed and he could hear it creaking. And he comes out and he says, the building's falling down, the building's falling down. And his boss said, oh, you're crazy. He says, no, no, come look. So the boss went in and looked and he said, everybody get out, get out. And, then, and it was so bad. They had to call men in from Portland Point to help clean it up. Oh. <laughs> why, why did they fall down? It just, it, the salt was putting pressure on the walls. These great big piles of salt. Yeah. Wasn't built sturdy enough. <coughs> this is, if you go down there to walk, how many people walk at, at Salt Point? Okay, if you come down around this big, if you drive down here and then you go around that circle and you go back and there's that, there's that nice little area of grass here and then over here there's a big area of grass with picnic tables. Well that's, I think now I can figure out that's where the canal was. This was called a canal. It's just a little waterway and they brought the barges in to load the salt on the barges to up the lake. And the way they did it, here's the railroad tracks. They'd open up a boxcar and just bring this bag of salt through the box car down the slide into the barges. And that picture's up at, at the tops. And Ben Peck did such a great job on that picture. It's better. At the, at down at the supermarket, the picture is much better than what you're seeing here. <laughs> there, you see again. 
This is a canal. It was just sort of a parking lot for barges. Yeah, it was a parking lot for barges, but they dressed it up and called it a canal. <laughs> I think some of the sticks are still there if you look Yeah, the that's where the cormorants are, are uh, sitting all the time now. Right, Candace? Oh, yeah. <laughs> In the storage shed. It's above the pile of salt. And this cart, you bring it out here on a narrow pathway or bridge, kind of a bridge that goes to nowhere over the piles of salt. And then you have a little latch here, and you undo the latch, then you tip the cart, and the salt goes out through that trap door. Well, the deer saw. One day when she went home for lunch, <coughs> by accident, because she's such a sweetheart, she never would have done it on purpose, by accident, she tripped the thing. So <laughs> when they came back from lunch, there was salt all over the floor because it was just poured out. She was very embarrassed about it. <laughs> this is the Barrel House gang. These are the ones that had to pack their lunch because they couldn't get from the uh, barrel house to the lunch counter. And they made their own barrels. The states came in on railroad cars and then they put them in the kiln to heat them up and cure them. And the, uh, but the, the tops of the barrels, they didn't have to put in the kiln. They came just right. So the barrels were like cardboard boxes and stuff. And though, yeah, they were made of wood, but yeah, it was packaging. And later on, they did it in burlap bags. We have a burlap bag in that. These are the ladies bagging the, bagging the table salt. This is their boss. Aren't they nice looking girls? Uh, they said it was a wonderful place to work and they're all smiles for the photographer. And there's a bag where they put their salt. And then you had people who sewed those bags. Once they got them filled up, they sewed them clothes. But these took the place of the settling tanks on the hill. But he's got a picture where there's still some settling tanks plus the soda ash silos. And they took the place of all that area. So as we got more modern, the plant shrunk. As you didn't need to make barrels, that got shut down. As you didn't need to have the settling tanks, that got shut down. This is the new storage shed, and it won't fall down. Here is it. Well, it's torn down. There, I mean, there's nothing left there anymore. Okay, now, rock salt has a lot of storage, but not this. This is what it looked like in 1964. Here's this big pile of coal. This is Salmon Creek. This is where Myers Park is today. But it's hard to imagine it was there when you walked down there in those paths. Sure. Not that long ago. Not that long ago. Yep. Candace. What were the other floors of the building? Administration? Uh, probably, and well, there was the packing, and there was a lot of different things that had to get done. I mean, there were different <coughs> grades of salt and different things like that. Well, the pans were real high, so yeah, the pans are really high. Catwalks and ladders and went up through in there. Yeah, this pan building. The only thing that's in this big building is those four pans. Before refrigeration, you used a lot of salt for canning and preservatives. So that's why it's huge cream. salt, yeah. And cowlicks. Hmm? Cowlicks. Cowlicks. Okay. Yeah, and they didn't use it on the road. They used coal cinders on the road. There we are. There's the pan building. And the silos. But yeah, right here, you can still see they have a few tanks. 
few settling tanks, or maybe that's where they had that, Gary, that acid in them, maybe? Uh, it had something to do with it. I was only, what, 10 or 11 years old at the time. <laughs> Just what my dad told me. Okay. But, this is the picture I was talking This is a man. Oh my, oh my goodness. That's how big the pans were. <laughs> Now, this is when they're taking it down. And they loaded these big pans on flat bed railroad cars, and Gary says they put them on trucks too to take them over to Watkins Glen. And those pans are over at U.S. Salt. That's time you, that's where they went. Now they're tearing down the buildings. The reason that went out of business is because we, the mine was mining over that way. And they got some water coming through the ceiling. Mm -hmm. And you know that mine is down one mile. Well, of course, in 64 it wasn't down one mile. It is now with Cargill. Well, well, but that's one thing that they did. The International started the process kind of a fracking we talked today. They put some pressure down the wells. And that's what caused it to start leaking in the mine. And they accused them of them, but then they came put some dye in there, and it did. It came into the mine. And then they proved it with the dye and the salt. Yeah. So they they definitely end this operation. So that yeah, that was the end of this plant. So it's, they worked at taking it down. And this is mid '60s. This is 1964. Uh, they, my dad said that he worked there and. August 10th, 62, he said that's the day they stopped making salt. Happened to be my little sister's birthday. <laughs> I know in the last page there in the, the book, it's got the date. Yeah, that white building was the office. And there's the houses up on Syrian Hill. And it burned. Now, they said that some, the spark was left by a worker there, and that's a nice way to blame somebody else. But for all we know, that was the way they could get rid of the plant in a hurry. Right. Yep. <laughs> Which is, I think that's probably what happened. Oliver Holden gave me these slides. Took a, quite a few days and quite a few fire companies to get that under control. And so it was safe. Did they mean for all the bricks to go in the lake? Well, they didn't, they didn't much care where they went. They might have shoved some in the lake. We used to go down there and pick up bricks all the time. How many people would go down there and pick up bricks? <laughs> that's the that's St. George's, the church that on Syrian Hill. It's the Syrian Orthodox Church. They're still having uh, services there today. And um, the the International Soul Company built that for the Syrian people. Those are the houses on Syrian Hill, and they are lovely places. Beautiful, beautiful. That's the best view. Were they immigrants that came to work at the... Uh, the Syrians, yes. Uh, it's typical, you'd get one Syrian come to work in the salt mine, and the word would go back, and all his relatives would come, and so you got a lot of Syrians there. Now, this is Gary Utah. Well, it's those tanks you talked about before, the soda that tower. Or, the soda silos. ash silos are here. You see the whiter salt, and then you see the blue one. With you the see blue the white, blue. and then the blue. Oh. So they still used some of the old-fashioned ways to do things, maybe. One thing I didn't tell you was way out at the far end of the point where the barrel house gang worked, that had open pan, even back in the 60s. And that's where they made coarse salt that you put on the outside of pretzels or you could use it in your ice cream maker. Oh, yeah.
They run 24 hours a day. Okay? So you Just like your rock salt. You have to have all the shifts. The process is you can't shut down. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. There's, you, can't, you don't shut down those fans once you've gotten fired up. <laughs> Now there's a nice derrick going up for a well. So they only had one well they used to pump the water down? Oh no, here. they had maybe six or ten wells. <coughs> this is a this is one that Gary brought us and this is the railroad. That's, that's one of the well drills. And that's yeah. the well, a well. So they the they were well they drilled some of but they're also continuously cleaning them and you know, running new pumps in like that. So it was. I like this picture that Gary brought in tonight. Look at there. <coughs> Got our train where you can load it and everything. Look at all this coal. They used a lot of coal there. They know. sure did. You see that metal colored shed? Mm -hmm. I think that's what my dad said. It was real narrow in there. Some of the guys that worked there was in there when they went through and he was killed because there wasn't enough room for him. Oh, you mean when these the car. boxcars came through here? Yeah. Oh, okay. I'll tell you, they didn't have safety like they do today. <laughs> Somebody fell. Okay, so that's all we're going to show with that today. We're, they're almost done anyway. But uh, if you go down to Salt Point now, it's a natural area. And um, here's uh, actually a sign about it. And it's uh, allowing to grow up, being allowed to grow up. Some wildflowers have been planted. Uh, you can take a, a road into there and um, goes to a, um, a boat launch. There's a little picnic area there, too. This is just for non-motorized boats like canoes and kayaks and so forth, maybe small sailboats. A little picnic area, but I don't think they allow any sort of fires or anything. But it's, this is a quiet, wild area. There's paths that walk around. They even have a little uh, uh, tiny library <laughs> there, uh, a little free library. People put books in there and you can borrow them and bring them back and so forth. So it's a pretty community friendly place. A little bit of environmental interpretation. This is a uh, monarch uh, station here and, and a pollinator thing um, for uh, plantings for to help pollinating insects. And of course the monarch butterfly which is in trouble because of the elimination of milkweed. So um, anyway, go on down to uh, Salt Point and um, look around, walk around. It's a wonderful place. And uh, um, go there all year long. Go on a not so windy day, it will be, it'd be pretty nice. So uh, thank you all for joining me here, and uh, we'll see you again soon. Like your pressure.